Okay, in this last video, I just want to do some random trig um, integrals that don't kind of fit the other cases real cleanly. So, a lot of times when you do this, it's just going to be playing with algebra, maybe using a trig identity. Um, you know, sometimes just being fairly resourceful and clever, just a bit lucky. So, in this problem, we're going to integrate cosine squared times tangent cubed. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll put everything in terms of sines and cosines. Um, and hopefully things cancel out. So I can write tangent cubed as sine cubed over cosine cubed. Well, that's nice because now you can think about the cosine squared as being over 1. So I have 2 on top, 3 on the bottom. I'll be left with sine cubed of x over just cosine of x dx. And now this is kind of like one of our, one of our other cases. Remember, if you had an odd power of sine, you could save that factor. So I'm going to leave my cosine in the bottom. I've got sine squared on top. And then I'm going to pull a sine x factor over to the side. And just keep him hanging out. And now I'm going to use my trig identity on sine squared. I can write that as 1 minus cosine squared of x over cosine x times sine x dx. And now at this point we can simply do a nice little uh, u substitution. We'll let u equal cosine of x. Um, du will be negative sine x dx. Um, we only want a positive sine x dx, so I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. And then if I use my u substitution, I'll get 1 minus u squared over u. My sine x dx is equivalent to my negative, which I'll pull out front, du. Um, so my negative is out front. I can now break this up algebraically as 1 over u minus u du. So now we're almost there. Whoops. just about there. So if you integrate 1 over u, you'll get the natural logarithm of u. If you integrate u to the first, you'll get u squared over 2 plus c. So then again, the last thing we need to do is just replace. So I'll have negative ln of u, which is cosine x, um, minus u, which is cosine squared x, over 2 plus c. Okay, so Definitely not a, a completely trivial problem, but nothing too crazy going on in there. Just uh, kind of simplifying, and really it just turns into the same idea that we used um, a second ago. All right, so let's see if we can't do um, a couple others here. So the next one I want to try to integrate here is just plain old cosecant of x. Okay, and this really, um, you know, a lot of times if there's powers of cosecant and cotangent, you can do that problem the same way as when you do secants and tangents. But here we just have cosecants by itself. So what we're going to have to do in this case is basically do some algebra. And this first step, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to write cosecant as cosecant over 1. And actually what I'm going to multiply the top by is cosecant x minus cotangent x. Well, if I do it to the top, I'm going to have to do it to the bottom as well. So cosecant x minus cotangent x dx. And again, this might seem a little strange to do. Um, let's simplify this down a little bit. It looks like we're going to get cosecant squared x minus cosecant x times cotangent of x. That's all over cosecant x minus cotangent of x. And now what you can do is you can actually check that if you do a u substitution here, so you can check my arithmetic, I'm going to let u be the denominator. I'm going to let u be cosecant x minus cotangent x. And after a bit of simplification, you can check that the derivative of this will be negative cosecant x, cotangent x, plus cosecant squared x, 
all that dx times dx. So now I'm just going to use this to replace um, everything that I have here, which is really everything that I need. Because notice on top, I've got a negative cosecant cotangent and cosecant squared. So really, this is just going to turn into the integral of 1 over u du. Well, how nice. If we integrate, then, we'll simply get the natural logarithm of u plus c and the natural logarithm of u, which is cosecant x minus cotangent x plus c. Okay. So I don't think this first step would, I don't know, at least to me, is not something completely natural that would jump into my head to do. So people often say, Patrick, how did you know how to do that? And I say, well, somebody showed me when I was taking calculus, and I just remember it. So um, I'm showing you. So. Um, hopefully you'll remember this little trick as well. So let's do just uh, one last one. Let's see. I think the last one I want to do here is cosine of x um, plus sine of x all over sine of 2x dx. Okay, so I think in this problem again, um, Almost any time I see sine of 2x, it just seems like you replace that with 2 sine x, cosine x, or it just seems like you use a trig identity on it a lot of times to make problems work out. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here. And now I'm just going to do some algebra and bust up my fraction. So I can write this as, I could even factor the 2 out. Okay, so I'll pull my 1 half out front, but then I'll have cosine x over sine x cosine x plus sine x over sine x cosine x dx. Well, the cosines are going to cancel out in the first part, the sines in the second, so I've got one half the integral, one over sine, but that's cosecant of x, plus one over cosine, which is secant of x dx. Okay, well, we just did um, the integral of cosecant of x there in our last problem. Okay, so we just did cosecant of x, and we had our formula for that one. Where'd it go? I've got it written down here. Um, so it says when we integrate cosecant, we get cosecant x minus cotangent of x. You can actually integrate secant of x the exact same way you do cosecant. Instead of multiplying by cosecant cotangent, you multiply secant and tangent. And you can show that if you integrate secant, you actually get the natural logarithm of secant x plus tangent x. And then we'll just simply tag on our, should put all that in brackets because the one half has to get distributed. And then we'll just tag on our plus c. So there it is, um, cut off a little bit. So. Again, I think trig integrals in me are, to me are a little tricky just because, I mean, integration is tricky just because you don't necessarily know what technique to use all the time. So um, you have to be a little resourceful, a little creative, and hopefully you'll just get lucky sometimes if nothing else. So hope this helps. If you have any questions, send me an email. Let me know.